Main Freight celebrates success and this year, 2013, marks the anniversary of our 20th year with Baird's Main Freight Primary. It's a relationship that stood the test of time because it's been cemented by so many people who have had principles come and go, but the unusual thing with our relationship is that it's been continuous. We've had the teachers involved, the children involved, and various managers at Main Freight. We've actually drawn each other in, we've passed the baton from one person to the other, but the relationship stayed solid throughout these 20 years. So join us now and watch the story unfold. My early days were brought up in Grayland, many of our neighbours were Maori, and I learned quite a bit of their culture, which was family and sharing and formed by values very much. My best mate that I grew up went to school with, Maori, Sonny. He beat me in every single year at school. I remember I would come third, he would come second. I'd come fifth, he'd come third in all the subjects. But he became a dustman and uh, I became a managing director and I laid awake at night wondering why was it so different. I figured really it was education. The board wanted something different to give their kids in the way of education. We wanted our kids to be computer literate. We had no ways and means of doing it, but we knew sponsorship would do it. So then we set about looking for sponsorship. Went to many places unsuccessfully, and then one day, our front desk person at the time, received a phone call from Bruce Plestead's PA. Well, I've just been to Tidy Boots and I decided to clean out the claim store. Found all this lovely softball gear and thought who would benefit from using it because we weren't, so I thought, oh, a school. We waited for the sports gear to come and it didn't. We waited and waited and then we gave up. And then out of the blue, Carol contacted again and said, oh, I'm ringing to apologise for you not getting the sports gear. The social club reactivated. Our manager will come out and bring you a cheque for $1,000 to buy some sports gear. The school was so grateful for the $1,000. They brought kids with us who sang songs and gave us letters and painting and sucked us right in, really. Bruce and Carol came out. Bruce gave the cheque. He looked around the school and we had a good chat with him. I distinctly remember him asking me if I had dreams for the school. And I said to them, can you give us a project that, that is quite big for us and that is too big for you to do and we will look at doing it over a period of time. So they came back and said we would like to put a computer in every room. Bruce said, what more can we do to help? And it was definitely the ICT and technology and computers in particular that we started with was the thrust. Putting the technology into Baird's Main Freight Primary was a critical part really in the relationship between Main Freight and Baird's. We had the five year plan, we really wanted to help them along with it and we did a demonstration. All the teachers stayed back after school and we wanted to show them what the computers could do because many of them had no idea about technology and we really needed their buy-in. At the end of the demonstration, we said to them, well, actually, these computers are yours. And we had teachers crying and, and it was just an amazing scene. Uh, they were top of the range and they were going to keep them. They set the two computers up in our office. We had no teachers in the school who could teach computers. The only person that had any technological capability there was a woman called Deidre Cummings who actually was the secretary. And she took the students and the computers, had them outside her office, and she would teach the students how to use these computers. They were making the most of what they had, and that's what I think struck a chord with us. We went out there and they demonstrated, I think they had one or two computers. They were sharing them. They were trying to get the children to sort of know what it was all about. 
but we had to make sure that they would have buy-in and teachers would have the education in how to use these computers. So we set up a meeting at the Auckland College of Education with the school and Pat and Kerry and we sat around the table and this lecturer from technology studies stood up and he said to them, oh, and by the way, how many computers do you have in your school? And the board chairman said, well, we've got two new ones and we've got a few old ones. And I said, well, no, you haven't. And they said, well, what do you mean? I said, no, you've got one for every classroom. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, by January next year, before you start school, we're going to provide a computer for every classroom. And that just blew them away. Well, by the end of the school day, I got a call from them to say that they'd been around every teacher and unanimously that all agreed to do the extra training after normal school hours and they were totally committed. They'd formulated a five-year plan and they came in and said they were doing it in one year. Fully computerised school, computers in classrooms, computer suite, everything. Everything we needed to take our kids forward. When the initial Information Technology Centre was set up, it was considered to be the best in the state primary school in the country. We saw it back in the 80s as a way forward for our kids and our families. We set up classes for parents. They came in and they used the computer suite. We actually employed a teacher with the help of Main Freight, I think Main Freight paid half the salary. What we want to do is, is show people that they have this capacity within themselves. These children need to understand that they don't have to wait for somebody to give them something. They don't have to wait for somebody else to create the environment. You can create it yourself. I believe all of our parents want what's best for their children. A number of these children come from families where there's not a lot of money in the home, otherwise we wouldn't be a decile one school. One of the sad things is that a number of our children don't really know what they can aspire to do. That's what the role model assembly is about. Say if you learn to read, if you get on with your schoolwork and if you do all that sort of stuff, then you can do anything. We wanted our kids to believe that it didn't matter where they came from and who they were, that if they worked hard enough and tried hard enough with support that they could do anything they wanted to do. Whether it's my children or somebody else's children, they are our future. And if we don't give them the tools for that future, uh, then it's going to be a very sad place. Our kids were getting a huge benefit out of what Main Freight was putting in. In our culture, it's not all take, it's give and take. We had nothing to give back. And then subsequently, the school changed its name to include our name in it. They changed it from Beds Road Primary to Beds Main Freight. It was a great honour and I hoped that it would catch on around the country, that more businesses would do it. But the school, they've come here and they've changed some of their ways of running the school to the way Main Freight runs its place. They have changed to open plans, so they all answer the phone, they all see the people who visit, they have this togetherness that Main Freight has. I can remember asking at one stage, because we had a vacancy on our board, about whether anyone from Main Freight would like to be on the board, and the guys said, that's not really what we're about. We don't want to make the decisions, we just want to be in there helping. They don't want to be a charter school. They don't want to have a say in who we employ or what we do. They just want to help us in whatever way they can to provide better opportunities or as good opportunities as we can. We're the only school in this area that takes part in Soapbox Derby. Now Soapbox Derby, some of the schools from various other parts of New Zealand compete. Main Freight managed to bring in a couple of soapbox derby cars which our children put together with help. That's an opportunity that children wouldn't have, but it's also an opportunity that wouldn't happen if teachers weren't prepared to go and spend all day Saturday or all day Sunday with the children.
A very special moment, I think, was when there was an anniversary for Main Freight and we were invited to take a group of children to perform. Members of the Main Freight family, which we're a part of, truck drivers and admin staff and people stood up to join in with the songs that the children were singing. And it was just a really warm family feeling and it did make you feel that anything's possible. Main Freight has given that experience that they would never have had before. Every year we go to Waiheke. I remember the first time we actually went, first time being on a ferry, being on the water, first time going out of Auckland, because a lot of these children don't have the opportunity to go on a boat or seeing farm animals, going to the beach. Some of them, it might be their first time even going on a bus. For most of the children, and I guess for a number of the adults who come with us, it's something that's totally new, something that they wouldn't experience otherwise. The other huge thing that Main Freight do is that Main Freight are basically Duffy Books. So Duffy Books is a literacy programme basically and its main goal is to develop or inspire a love of reading in young people in New Zealand and we work with all our low decile schools in the country and it's all about giving these kids opportunity to have choice and ownership of their own brand new books. My passion for books and homes is really because I, I felt I read my way out of my small town that I lived in and, and if it wasn't for my reading I wouldn't be where I was today. So I can see a huge difference that reading can make. It's just fantastic to be able to give and really we've got to thank Bruce for his generosity to allow us to spend the money on the schools and the books and the computers and everything like that. But the reward is, is phenomenal, just going and visiting the schools and seeing the kids and how much they're getting out of it. It lifts the whole community as well, you know, you can see that the community buys in. And I think the important thing about the association on both sides is that everybody's doing it for the benefit of kids and families. I don't think you should ever give with an expectation of getting something back. We know as a company that by having a generosity of spirit, we, we get far more back than we give away.